Berkatha Yahweh, Berkatha Yahweh Shai, Kahala Yam La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Brachaha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Brachaha Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all your brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shabbat Shalom. It's a brother Matati from Great Millstone Camp, the branch out in Des Moines. And um not sure when I'm gonna title this lesson just yet, but uh it's pretty much based off this video that just ugh, um just just resurfaced. And um yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna just play it, get her off the screen. I know they're you could be I'm sorry. Okay, so they go back to the now that's a key thing right now i'm gonna grab that precept because the elder malcolm quoted a precept and said who was given that promise man and then you're gonna hear vocab try to give his his his, his bogus interpretation but this is a uh, Galatians 3, and I'll start at, uh, verse 26, it says, For you are all the children of the Heavenly Father by faith in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. For as many of you as have been baptized into Yahweh Shai have put on Yahweh Shai. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Now there's clearly a difference between a male and a female, man. So what is it saying that there's no dip, there's <laughs> neither a uh, uh, male or female? It's talking about how we're all Israel, how we're all children of Yahweh through our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. Right. So it don't matter the custom you was raised in. It it matters that what you are of the seed of Abraham. Don't matter if you was bond or if you was free, if you was a servant or not. You are the uh, you are of the seed of Abraham. Let's keep reading though. Verse twenty nine. And if ye be Yahweh Shai's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So this is the precept that the elder had quoted, right? So now listen to this guy. Ugh. Seed and heirs according to the promise. Who was given the promise? All the other nations weren't there to get the promise. That's now, right. oh, wait. They weren't Somebody to get just flipped on a nail. Right, so now it says, now, now it says, I. And you notice this devil ain't got no beard, but now he got one, though, right? <laughs> we'll use you to bless all that's nations what, that's when the king what? Up, man. your seed and guess what you see so so he steady trying to use this precept right let's scroll up this is um let's see Yep, let's start up. Let's start at verse 6. It says, matter of fact, let's start at 5. It says, He therefore that ministered to you the spirit, meaning the what? The faith of Yahweh Shai. Right? Because in John 6 and 63, it says what? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So us preaching the faith of Yahweh Shai is the spirit. You see? He therefore that ministered to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Because there were Jews who were teaching the Israelite foreigners that they had to keep the law in order to be uh, perfect, man. Which Paul is letting the Galatians know, like, nah, it's not about the law. It's about the faith in our Lord Yahweh Shai, who justifies us from the law, man. But let's keep reading. Verse 6, even as Abraham believed the Most High, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. So Christians are read this and say, yeah, see, whoever believes, we're all children of Abraham. No, that's not what Paul is saying. According to Ephesians, the second chapter, faith is a gift that's given from the, uh, the Heavenly Father. In the book of John, I believe it's nine, if I'm not mistaken, St. John, the ninth chapter, but it says what? It says that a man can receive nothing except to be given unto him from the Father uh, from heaven, man, roughly paraphrasing. So whoever can hear this word and understand it and believe in it, it shows forth that you are an Israelite, man. No matter the outward appearance, you see? 
Because the spirit within us beareth witness with the spirit, meaning these words, that we are the children of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. You see? See, this thing is of a physical lineage of Abraham's seed, but it's of the spirit. And these things are spiritually discerned. So those that are of the spirit is going to understand what I just said. But verse 7, it says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that the Most High would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So when the Lord said that's what he's talking about, all the, the, the actual heathen, was he talking about Esau and Moab and Ammon and Ishmael? Well, let's see. Let's go back to Genesis. Let's see when the Lord said that to Abraham, right? Genesis 12 and 3. Matter of fact, Genesis 12 and 1. Now Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. It didn't say great uh, nations, because Ishmael came out of Abraham, right? He had uh, six sons by a woman named Keturah as well. But this is single, a great nation. Let's keep reading. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed, right? Genesis 18:18. 18, 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Genesis 22 and 18. It says Verse 16, I and I said, I'm sorry, and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thy only son, showing you who the promise was, was, was going through. See, when you go into the story, Ishmael was by Hagar of the bondwoman. Isaac was of Sarah, the free woman, man. And what did the Lord say? He said that I'm a bless, I'm a bless Ishmael. He 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 gonna be he gonna be you know a, a mighty nation. He gonna have twelve uh, uh, princes come out of him. Roughly, uh, you know, uh, uh, Salaki. If I'm, you know, misquoting, you know, I'm just going off memory. But what did he say about Sarah and Isaac? He said, but no, the promise shall come through Sarah and the seed that's within her, man. So the seed of the promise was our was our forefather Isaac. It was, it's, 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 it's a significance there, man. Right? But it says, verse 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. Because the Lord said what? His promise of him inheriting the land and his seed being multiplied would come through Isaac. The son of the promise, man. Which is why in Isaac the seed was called in, in your Lord Yahweh Shai is the seed called, man. But anyway, it says that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, <clears throat> and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice, man. You see? So he's saying that unto Abraham, man. Which is Abraham is called the father of the promise. Now, who was this promise passed down to? This is Genesis 26 and 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. So we're reading about what? Our forefather Isaac. This is verse 2. And Yahweh Basham Yahweh appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath, I will perform the promise, which I swear unto Abraham thy father. You see that? Oath, yep. It's the promise, man. You see? So the promise was given unto Isaac through Abraham. Let's keep reading. Verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. 
Now, how many seeds did Isaac have? He had two sons. One was named Jacob and the other was named Esau. And is Esau blessed? Is he the, the child of the promise? No, he's not, man. See, his blessing is temporary. He's ruling right now, as it is written in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter. Esau is the end of the world, but Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau's blessing was temporary. His blessing was the sword, and he will rule the world through violence. But when our Lord Yahweh Shah returns, guess what? He's going to put that out, man. And peace is going to reign throughout the earth. And that's the promise unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob being established. Real quick, I want to prove that. This is the book of Luke. One and sixty-eight. It says, Blessed be Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Now, when you start at 67, this is uh John the Baptist's father, his name is Zechariah, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied. So this is a prophecy. These words are faithful and true. Verse 69. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That's our Lord Yahweh Shah. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham. You see that? And what it and this is Zechariah speaking. Let's see. Let's see what uh, 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 Paul said. This is Romans 9 and 4. It says, who are Israelites? Now, when you read up, he says what? I'll start at three. It says, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shah for my brother and my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises. So the promises pertain only to Israel. Verse 5, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shah came, showing you that this is of a, 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 of a seed. This is a seed. This thing is of a seed. It's of a lineage. You see? Who is over all the Most High blessed forever Amon. You see that? Let's go back. Genesis 26 and, uh, yep, we read that already. So from there, we read about Isaac. Let's jump over a couple chapters. Let's read about our forefather, Jacob. This is, uh, Genesis 29. I'm thinking this, uh, it should be chapter 28, I think. Yep, this is Genesis 28 and let's start at uh 12 i started at 11 and he lighted upon a certain place i started 10 so we can get the context and jacob went out from beersheba and went toward haran and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of the heavenly father ascending and descending on it and behold, Yahweh stood above it and said, I am Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thy liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed, man. So the promise that was given to Abraham passed down to Isaac, passed down to Jacob, right? Now, when we read in Sirach, the 44th chapter, this is Sirach 44, and this could have been, this could have easily been explained when vocab uh, popped up in Chicago. This is about four and a half, almost five years ago, man, <laughs> you know, because hey, it's spiritual, you know, uh, 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 that, that, that was my last weekend living in chicago man when vocab came because when you watch that video you see the brothers from des moines you uh, uh you call uh 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 pop we affectionately call pops his name is Pawaria and uh yeshia you know those men were coming out to chicago to come get me you know 
Now, originally, I was supposed to only spend two weeks out here, but, hey, two weeks turned into, man, hey, and it's 444 on this license plate that just rolled past. Call all y'all by showing y'all a shot, man. May we receive that mercy from the Lord. But um, that two weeks turned into, <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. You know, I'm still here. You know, but, hey, hey, hey that was my last uh, week, you know, living in Chicago, man, when 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 vocab uh, uh, showed up. But um, Sirach 44. And uh, verse 19, Abraham was a great father of many people and glory was there none like unto him who kept the law of the most high and was in covenant with him. He established a covenant in his flesh. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea. And from river to the utmost part of the land with Isaac, did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men of all what men of that's of that lineage and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him a heritage and divided his portions among the 12 tribes. Did he part them, man? You see that? So we're seeing that this promise is passed down from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. The same things are being said to, to all three of our forefathers. That's why when we jump to the 35th chapter here in um, Genesis 35 and... I believe it is Genesis 35. Yep. Genesis 35 and 9. And the Most High appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. And the Most High said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And the Most High said unto him, I am Alashadia, right? The God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins. So when it says in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed, it's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel because each tribe is a nation within itself, man. Going back into the promise of what? The seed being multiplied as the sand and as the stars of the heaven. <laughs> you see? So this is who the promise is to. Verse 12, and the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it and to thy seed after thee will I give the land, man. So when we go back to Galatians, the third chapter, it's clear what Paul is saying, man. Let's go back to Galatians 3 and verse 8 again. In the scripture, foreseeing that the most I would justify the heathen, the Israelite foreigners, those that wandered out of the way and would have to be called back. This is why Yahweh Shah gave the parable. Um, this is Luke 15. And 11. And he said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto him, I'm sorry, unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Right. Look, this, this is a good one. Proverbs 29 and three. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. And a harlot could be symbolic of what? Of of of, of 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 false philosophies, man, false doctrine. A whoring what through through these different gods. You see? And that's the parable that Yahweh Shah is given. One of the sons went away. Keep in mind that Yahweh Shah is speaking this parable unto the, the people back then, man. So he was given the understanding that what? Yeah, y'all stayed. Y'all the y'all the Jews would represent the son that stayed. And the son that left would represent these Israelite foreigners having to be brought back. You see? So it says he wasted his living 
or he wasted his substance with riotous living. Verse 14. And when he has spent all there, I'm sorry. And when he has spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want, meaning lack and need. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So he became what? A servant. And it's the same thing as us, man. It says, I seen princes walking upon the earth as servants, man. That's what happened, right? But it says, verse 17, and when he came to himself, he remembered himself. He said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. So he repented. He returned. <laughs> this is the parable of what? Of the Israelite foreigners, man, acknowledging their sin and returning back unto the heavenly father through our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. Verse 19, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came and it shows you the humility. Have mercy upon me, Lord, a sinner. Couldn't even look up into heaven, man. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. What it says, it shall, it, it shall be joy in heaven over one sinner that repents, man. Right? Verse 21. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. He that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see? We left from the living power, man. We started worshiping idols. We started keeping the customs of the heathen. That's us spinning our substance with riotous living, man. For this my son was dead and is alive again. Ephesians, the second chapter. You who were once dead in sins have he quickened with our Lord Yahweh Shah. Roughly paraphrasing that word quicken means to make alive. We're alive again in the sight of Yahweh through our Lord Yahweh Shah. This is who the promises is to. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. It says what? I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And they began to be married. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in, therefore came his father out and entreated him. And that's why uh, it, it, uh, Paul said in Romans the 11th chapter that I can uh, uh, cause or, or move some to envy, man. Roughly paraphrasing it. You know, this is the parable once again. <laughs> that, 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 that of, of the Israelite foreigners, man, coming back and how the Jews would be moved with envy. But it says, verse nine, and he answering said to his father, lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which have devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. It says, yep, with harlots, right? Going back into uh, uh, that Proverbs. And he said unto him, son, thou art ever with me and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So. Going back to this Galatians, the most high foreseeing that he would justify the Israelite foreigners through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You see that? So if we believe in this word and the proper doctrine, we are Israel, man. Romans 8 and 16, once again, baby. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. 
For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the heavenly father, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them, showing you that we still got to apply and walk in the, in, in, in the laws of the Lord, man, to the best of our ability. Yahweh Shah hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners. Because why? Because Yahweh Shah was made a curse for us. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Who was the law given to? Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Go back and read Exodus. Who was there in the wilderness, man? 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. It was our fathers that was under the cloud. It was our fathers that was baptized unto Moses. Why is Paul writing this unto the Corinthians? The Corinthians lived in the, in, in the city of Corinth that was located in Greece. There is no difference between a Jew or a Greek. Why? Because they're all Israel. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. <clears throat> Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul it or addeth thereto. So you got vocab trying to add these other nations. No, you can't add unto it, playboy. This is what it is, man. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith, and, and he saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one unto thy seed, which is Yahweh Shai, man. You see that? So our faith in Yahweh Shai shows forth we are Israel, man. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of the Most High in Yahweh Shai, the law, which was 430 years after, meaning what? When we came out of Egypt, we spent 400 years as slaves, 30 years uh, 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 um, sojourning, right? When Joseph came down and, and Jacob and the rest of the, uh, 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 of the brothers came down, 30 years we were free, 400 years we were slaves, right? So 430 years is when we came out with Moses and it was given the laws, right? So it says the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So the promise was given to Abraham first, and then the law was given to Moses. But in the law, it says what? If we don't do these certain things, we shall be cut off from the people. Does that disannul us from getting the promise? No. Because the Most High swore unto Abraham. Let's get that. It's Hebrews. Is it six? Hebrews six and 13. For when the Most High made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein the Most High willingly, more abundantly, to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. That word immutability unalterable is fixed unchangeable that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the most high to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul meaning it holds us down it holds us firm both sure and steadfast and which entereth into that within the veil which whether the forerunner is for us entered even Yahweh Shah. See, Yahweh Shah was able to go into the Holy of Holies, man, and present uh, himself before the Heavenly Father for us. So Yahweh Shah is our anchor. You see that? Even Yahweh Shah made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, man. You see? So the Most High made that promise to Abraham. The law couldn't break that promise. So through Yahweh Shah, we are able to what? To partake of that promise, man. Because he redeemed us from the law. <laughs> you see? Verse 18. It says, for if the inheritance, back in Galatians 3 and 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But the Most High gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? 
it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator meaning moses now a mediator is not a mediator of one but the most high is one is the law then against the promises of the most high the most high forbid for if there had been a law given which could have given life verily righteousness should have been by the law but the scripture hath concluded all under sin as he wrote in Romans 3, we all fall short of the glory of the Lord, every last one of us, man. That the promise by faith of Yahweh Shahamashiach might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Yahweh Shah, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. But you still apply those things you learned in school, right? Exactly. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of the Most High by faith in Hamashiach Yahweh For as many of you as have been baptized into Yahweh have put on Yahweh There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And if ye be Yahweh Shai's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then I'm going to jump to the fourth chapter. Keep reading. Now I say, because keep in mind, this is these are letters. It wasn't codified. It wasn't. Paul didn't break it down into chapters and verses. This is a continual letter, right? Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. How she had to purify herself because she received seed from man. Showing you that Joseph is his biological father. Right. And that Yahweh Shah was. Uh, subject to the law and how he kept it perfectly verse 5 to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons when you go into that word adoption that relationship which god was pleased to establish between himself and the israelites in presence to all other nations man you see that so we're able to be sons again through our lord yahweh shai Verse 6, and because ye are sons, the Most High has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then heir of the Most High through Yahweh Shai, man. Going back into the parable, he came back and said, man, I just want to be a son. I mean, I, it's like it. I just want to be a servant. And the father was like, nah, you my son. Put a robe on him. Put a ring on him. Let's celebrate, you know. Hey, so... Lord will, I hope this was edifying. You know, I just wanted to uh, uh, touch up on that. You know, because hey, hey, this this video resurfaced, man. You know, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to speak on that. You know, this guy, he ain't got, uh, this guy ain't got it, man. You know, this guy ain't got it, man. Hey, so Lord will, I hope this was edifying. The water, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises on the glory too. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Barakaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Yeshabah Shalom.